What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about the culture and demographics of Norway. This is a follow-up to part one of this little two-part video series, where in the first part, I was watching the first half of this video explaining the geography of Norway to me. And there was a lot to it, a lot I didn't know. But uh, I'm very glad I learned all that, because I have a much better understanding now of how, oh, not just the landscape is divided up in Norway, but the regions and all of the, the space and the ocean that Norway owns and the islands and something crazy going on down in Antarctica as well. And then now the second half of this video actually has more to do with demographics and society in Norway and more of the culture aspect of it, which is a bit different than the geography, a little related as well, but uh, I thought nonetheless extremely interesting and very important. So I'm very excited to take a look at this, uh, more about the, the people of Norway and the composition, if you will. So let's take a look. Thank you, Keith. Norwegians have a saying, they are born with skis. The word yeah. even comes from the ancient Norse word skith, which means split wood. If there yeah, I learned that, I mean, skiing was invented in Norway, right? That's pretty insane to think about it. I don't know where many sports were invented, but I know skiing is in, they invented in Norway, and they f love to ski, and like he, the narrator is saying, uh, it's like the people in Norway were born with skis on their legs. Everyone's skiing. Everyone's, they, Norway, on a more serious note, uh, has lots of Olympic athlete level skiers, lots of successful athletes, and just everyone's skiing. Uh, very interesting. If there was any kind of apex cold winter type of people on earth, Norwegians would take the gold. And they <laughs> literally do take the gold. Like, they have more Winter Olympics gold medals than any other country. First of yeah. all, the country has about 5.3 million people and as of 2018 has the highest human development index out of any country in the world. At about 84%, really? the country is made up primarily of people that identify as ethnically Norwegian, including about 60,000 indigenous Sami people. Oh, interesting. A lot of the time... I mean, I've also heard about a lot of the diversity in people immigrating into Norway, but uh, as of 2018 at least, 84% of people in Norway, uh, their parents were Norwegian, basically. Very interesting. About 8.3% of the population is other European descent, mostly Western Europe, and the remaining population is made up of other people groups from outside of Europe, from various regions of Africa, Asia, mostly from countries like Pakistan, Somalia, Morocco, Iraq, and Kurdish people. They use okay. the Norwegian krone as their currency, they use the type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Thank goodness that <laughs> you drive on the right side of the road. Hold on, let me look at the plugs again. The Norwegian krone as their currency, they use the type C. Yeah, I don't know about these plugs. Round? No, I'm <laughs> kidding. The plugs are fine. And uh, since I could just drive on the right side of the road, like normal, uh, I can put up with the round plugs. E F plug outlets and they drive on the right side of the road. <laughs> Interesting to note that they are not part of the EU, but part of the European Economic Area and Free Trade Association. Right, Norway is not part of the EU but still has so much leverage in terms of economic power, uh, selling oil and exporting fish and all of that, that I think Norway still gets plenty of benefits, uh, even not being part of EU. In fact, Norway is a kingdom, currently under the headship of King Harald V. However, his role is mostly representative and ceremonial. His executive powers are limited, and most government is ruled by the parliament. Essentially, though, mm. although some would argue Vikings kind of started in Denmark, it really kicked off in Norway. Nor okay. Yeah, I learned a little about this at some point, but I am not at all familiar with Viking history. And yes, many people in the United States would definitely associate Norway with Vikings. So, sounds like that's somewhat accurate. Norwegian Vikings did kind of all the exploring and colonizing and raiding and killing, you know, Viking stuff. And no, they did not wear helmets with horns. Language-wise, Norway actually has two official languages, Norwegian and Sami, the language of the minority northern indigenous peoples that have lived in the frigid regions for millennia. The Nor huh, I don't know much about the Sami, the indigenous Norwegian people. That's interesting. I'm gonna have to, uh, learn more about that. Uh, they have their own uh, sort of nationally recognized Norwegian language as well. 
Very good. Yeah. The Norwegian language, however, is kind of confusing though because it kind of has two different writing systems that everybody must learn in school. Nunorsk and Bokmål. Bokmål. I keep hearing Bokmål. And from what I've gathered, it, like the narrator was saying, it is more of a written version of Norwegian. What exactly are they? Well, it kind of goes like this. Hey, we've been in a union with the Danish for centuries and now they are gone. We can speak our own language freely. Woohoo! But we've been writing our language in the Danish style for so long. I mean, what do we do? Do we change it? Hi, I'm Evo Olsen and I say yes. I'm going to listen to all the dialects of Norwegian and come up with a weird fusion thing that can work for everyone. I'll call- <laughs> New Norsk. I've heard of that as well. It is hilarious how they <laughs> do these little skits to explain very simply to people like me what's going on. Very good, very helpful. Uh, New Norsk. We can teach it in schools and everyone can be free of Danish influence. Uh... And today the Danish style book mall is still used by about 85% of the population. Oh, <laughs> so that didn't even really end up happening. Uh, the New Norsk didn't end up becoming the majority, majority used. Bookmall did, even though it has Danish roots. Interesting how history works. Weird side note, the word ha can mean almost anything in Norway. For example, ha. Ha? Ha. Ha. <laughs> Speaking of which, let <laughs> Is that true? Ha. You know, even in English, from time to time, I'll use the term ha, mostly to express, um, amazement or interest or like I didn't know something like huh like that but it's really is it really popular in Norway that's pretty funny like many of their other neighbors Norwegians have 13 years of school graduating at age 19 and when Norwegians are just about ready to take their final exams they go on a three-week party called Rus right I just learned about this <laughs> the, the month-long party of graduating high school uh, and just look it up. Norway has lots of different dialects. Here are some of you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, explaining. På standard norsk ville jeg sagt hvordan, men i Olsens område ville jeg sagt hvordan. Hey, my name is Talina. In standard Norwegian you might say våres, but in Egersund area you say okas. In the west you could say gisla løy da. And in the north maybe kurarti. In Oslo you would say something along the lines of det er ikke lett, skjønner du? Trøndelag County, det er ikke lett skjø. So Wow, it's pretty different. <laughs> That's pretty different for a dialect. I, uh, funny enough, just uh, reacted to a video about Norwegian dialects as well. But I certainly did not get an opportunity to listen to some of the different Norwegian dialects actually in person, or rather over the internet, <laughs> which sometimes I confuse for reality, you know? I lose track of what's going on, where I am. Sometimes I think I'm really in Norway. No, <laughs> no. Thankfully, it hasn't not got to that point yet. But uh, <laughs> I, I know a little about dialects, but it's fun to hear them. So in standard Norwegian, you would say "sopel," but in Bergen, we say "boss." Yeah, I mean, in some of these dialects, the words are completely different, um, which is pretty extreme, in my opinion. But uh. I think there's a lot to Norwegian dialects that I don't understand the nuances of. Thank you. Otherwise, there are so many other things you guys, the Norwegian geography peeps, wanted us to talk about in terms of your culture. And here is Random Hannah with culture stuff. Norway is a land loaded with tradition and folklore. Many of you have already heard of things like trolls and elves, but there's also scary beings like the Holdra, not Marit. Whoa! Whoa. These are actually scary. <laughs> heard of things like trolls and elves, but there's also scary beings like the whole dr Wow. That is a great scary creature. This should be like in a horror movie or something. Huh. Uh, not Mara and the new kid. Pretty much all Norwegians are outdoorsy people. Hiking and cross-country skiing are national pastimes, hands down. Almost yeah. everyone owns some kind of Mari sweater, made of wool with traditional patterns <laughs> knitted onto the upper parts, usually in the next- Really? Really? Is this a thing? Did Norwegian- <laughs> is this a stereotype or is this real? Norwegians all own- uh, one of these cool sweaters. I like them. I don't mind the pattern going across the chest and arms. This is this would be considered a little, a little formal, a little tacky in uh, uh, the United States. 
But if when winter comes around and the holiday season comes around, this would be perfect. Perf everyone would be complimenting your sweater. So I, I like them. National colors of red, white, and blue. Many Norwegians own small cabins in the woods and they actually like to brag about how bad their cabins can be. <laughs> As in how technologically disconnected they are with the least amenities. No Wi-Fi, no electricity, no plumbing. You're hardcore. There's no way most Norwegians just have a cabin getaway, right? A lot of Norwegians just ha own a cabin? I guess, you know, Norway is doing what pretty well wealth-wise. Maybe a lot of Norwegians do have enough money to own a little cabin. A shoddy cabin, where apparently it's cool to have the worst cabin. <laughs> That's funny. Speaking of bragging, in Norway, it's considered super cool to come back from vacation and show off your tan. Because ah. it's kind of hard to get a tan in Norway. The noble- Oh, I mean, goodness knows having a tan in the United States is very common. An artificial tan, I should say. Totally different than what uh, she's talking about. Norway, you come back and brag about your natural tan, but in the United States, everyone just gets goes inside a tanning bed and gets an artificial tan. So it's very common. Well, Peace Prize is also awarded in Oslo every year because it's kind of hard to get a tan in Norway. The Nobel Peace Prize is also awarded in Oslo every year. In Norway, everyone's income and wealth is- The Nobel P Peace Prize is uh, awarded in Norway? I never, uh, never appreciated that fact. I wonder why was it Nobel Peace Prize have some kind of historical ties to Norway? That's very cool. The Nobel Peace Prize is also awarded in Oslo every year. In Norway, everyone's income and wealth is on public record, mostly. But for what it's worth, the nation does this to help prevent tax evasion. Cool. I'm all for public transparency. Uh, a lot of people in the United States would be very uncomfortable disclosing how much money they make. But it can be good for employees, especially in America. Uh, when they know how much each other make so they can negotiate better for salaries and whatnot. So that's kind of cool. And finally, we cannot skip the bunads. These are traditional costumes of Norway that come in so many different varieties based on the region and town you are from. They are mostly worn for special occasions, especially for May 17th, the country's national day, where they march to the castle in Oslo. Bunads? Bunads. I... I've seen these uh, in some of the Norwegian videos I've watched. I assumed they had something to do with Norwegian traditional dress or something. Old style dress. Uh, this is quite interesting. And it does make sense that it's something that exists for formal occasions like Constitution Day. Very interesting. I'd want to learn more about these, actually. Especially for May 17th, the country's national day, where they march to the castle in Oslo. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, get out of here. I want to talk about music. Traditionally, Norwegians have their own regional folk music and dance is called Bugdidans. Traditional instrument. Wow. There's a lot. There's actually a lot of stuff here that I've... I'm learning for the first time. Instruments include things like dulcimers, goat horn, willow flute. The traditional folk music eventually found a way to fuse with one of the most popular genres of Norway today, metal, or specifically Norwegian folk metal. <laughs> folk metal. Folk metal. I got a I gotta check that out. Not only that, but black metal was started supposedly in Norway. What is what is black metal? I'm not a, I don't listen to metal or, or really much rock, honestly. Uh, so I'm not even familiar with regular metal, let alone black metal. But I'm, I'm open to it. I'm open to it. And it has since been a domineering genre many people have been playing for decades. That's it for me. Thank you again, Keith. Anyway, we gotta move on. History, in the quickest way I can put it, Viking Age. This dude unites Norway into one kingdom. Vikings invade and take over a ton of other places like England. Christianity, Old Kingdom, Black Plague, Union of Kalmar, Denmark takes over. Lutheranism, Sweden takes over. Constitution established. For <laughs> I actually, since this video is not supposed to be about the history of Norway per se, 
Uh, I, I kind of like how quick he's going. It's the really quick history of Norway, okay. First wave of immigrants to America, they finally leave Sweden. World War I, neutral. Women's suffrage. World War II, neutral again, but Germany doesn't care. Joins NATO and European Free Trade Association. Oil boom, they vote and reject EU membership. Host the Winter Olympics in Lillehammer. Largest underwater gas pipeline in the world open. Oslo grows and more immigrants come in. And here we are today. I asked you <laughs> Norwegian geography peeps for some notable people from Norway or of Norwegian descent. And here are some of the ones you suggested we put in this video. Eric the Red, so many past Vikings and kings. Blah blah blah. Edward Gregg, Edward Munk. These riders, these cross country skiers, Roald Amundsen. This is going by pretty quickly, but I also reacted to famous Norwegians not too long ago. But I'm pretty sure a lot of the folks he's mentioning here. Uh, I didn't get to see in that video, so this is nice. Magnus Carlsen, Max Magnus, Tor Heyerdahl, Fritjof Nansen. So many musicians. A lot of musicians. Do I know any of them? I know Aha. I don't really know anyone else here. Sigrid? Do I know her? Huh. Like these people, as well as act actors. Christopher Hivju. Hivju? Christopher. I know him from, uh, from Game of Thrones. That's pretty cool. He's Norwegian. Who knew? There's like these people, and of course, the royal family. Seriously though, did you guys watch the movie Kontiki? It's pretty good. I mean, his migration theory was still kind of mostly wrong, but hey, you did a cool thing, man. And that's the thing about Norwegians. Huh. They're so globally intrepid. They reach out to the far corners. And with that, they've also made a lot of friends. Which brings us to... Now, Norwegians are known... The friend zone. Norwegian. Norway is known for reaching out and becoming friends with all parts of the world, that's kinda, kinda beautiful. For being very level-headed and nice, but they do know who they support and stand by no matter what. First of mm. all, Switzerland is kind of like their weird alternate parallel universe twin that shares a lot in common with them. They both are not part of the EU, they both are very financially stable, yet expensive to live in, they both have mountains and snow, and they both have similar values in general affairs. Yeah, you know, I don't know much about Switzerland at all, but I, I think I have in my mind found myself thinking of Switzerland and Norway as being very, very similar in a lot of ways, and this kind of confirms it. They get along pretty well and enjoy sharing the ski stories. The UK is a very close friend, especially Scotland, due to their shared Viking history. They even give them a Christmas tree every year to say thanks for helping in World War II, when their king and government were taken in from exile as the Germans tried to invade. Nepal has close ties. As another mountain nation, they've taken much interest and send much aid to their programs. High profile okay. politicians have visited in the past, like their Minister of Environmental Development, Eric Solheim, and the Prime Minister of Nepal visited Norway as well. For the USA, they have a very close connection not only in diplomacy, government, and business, but specifically to the diaspora living in the USA. And oh, oh goodness, I'm not even really aware of this group of people, the diaspora. I'm not aware of them very much at all. I'm going to have to look into this. Specifically, the state of Minnesota. Nearly a million Norwegian Americans live in this one state alone. What? How did I... I've never heard of this. Never. I feel like most Americans... I've never heard of this. The USA holds more people of Norwegian heritage than any other country outside of Norway, with almost as many as there are in Norway. They even have a game show called Alt for Norge, in which Norwegian Americans see the homeland of their ancestors. They cry and act way too dramatic, which is entertaining. I think people in the comments have mentioned this reality show, but I did not realize they were talking about Norwegian, uh, people of Norwegian descent living in America. I didn't... Uh, really grasp that part of it. This this is this is fascinating now. Very interesting. The winner gets to meet their Norwegian relatives, and the losers get a book telling them information, but they don't get to meet their relatives, which is kind of messed up. But it's a game show. What do you expect? <laughs> anyway, when it comes to their best friends, pretty much what I've heard is a mix between all the Nordics, but specifically Iceland, Denmark, and Sweden. Iceland is like their party friend they love to go on adventures with. They're also kind of like the preserved Norse nation that their ancestors colonized, which holds a dear spot in their hearts. Today, they have a defense agreement that allows the Norwegian Air Force to survey and patrol the Icelandic airspace as well. Denmark Denmark and Norway, however, are always kind of fighting for Norway's affection. Both. <laughs> wow, Norway has a lot of different ties to a lot of different countries. My goodness. These nations in the past have fought each other and ruled over Norway under separate kingdoms. All three. Right, I do know a little about that. 
uh, Denmark, Sweden, and Norway having a complicated history. Countries were at one point part of the Kalmar Union. They can relatively understand each other when they talk. Swedish is closer to Norwegian, though. They are all part of NATO, the Council of Europe, and many people from each of these nations end up marrying and having families together. Oh, wow. Huh. I didn't, I didn't realize that. I mean, the countries are, the three of them are so close together and so closely related. It makes sense. Uh, I really just never think of things like that because living in, like, uh, the United States, I'm not next to another country. And I, I don't live on the border of the United States and Canada or by Mexico. So, uh... It's just more United States everywhere I go. Every <laughs> so, about's pretty cool. In conclusion, Norway's prosperity doesn't stop with their will for gritty cold adventure. They've scaled the South Pole, the icebergs, the glaciers, and the tundras. It's almost as if the ice keeps them warm. Stay tuned, Oman is coming up next. Okay, that was good. That was very good. That was by Geography Now. Uh, oh. Oh, right, this is the same video as uh, part one. That's why I've already liked it. Well, I can't like it again, or I would. Um, are there any interesting comments? If you put mayonnaise on a taco in Norway, you will get exported faster than our oil. <laughs> I saw some people in the comments of uh, the video I made before this one. Uh, make, letting me know that mayonnaise in tacos is not a thing in Norway. I hear you. I acknowledge, <laughs> I acknowledge it. I will not do that. Um, <laughs> I don't think I was going to do that anyway. And I also don't think you're weird anymore because I know you don't do that. Or maybe, maybe some of you do, you weirdos. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I really did enjoy this video. Um, it honestly had many facts that I happened to have uh, vaguely heard before, which was nice to hear again, to cement it in my brain, but plenty of stuff that I have not heard about. And I almost want to go through this again at some point and pick out some of the interesting things they were talking about. Uh, the people living in America from Norway being one of them, and all sorts of other traditions and customs in Norway that I heard in this video that I want to learn more about. So this was very good, very useful, and very interesting. If you found this interesting as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Norway, Norwegian culture, things and stuff in Norway that I've never seen before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.